In today's lesson, we're going to learn about egg white foam. It doesn't sound too appetizing, but if you've ever eaten a cheese souffle or lemon meringue pie, you've already encountered the culinary wonder of an egg white foam. A foam is simply a cluster of small bubbles. When you run a sink of sudsy dishwater or pour root beer over ice cream for a float, you're creating a foam. Egg whites are 90% water. Take a whisk and try to whip water into a foam and you'll soon discover it can't be done. Any bubbles that form will pop and disappear right away. However, the remaining 10% of egg whites happens to contain the kind of protein that is very helpful in creating a foam. Here's how it works. When you beat egg whites, a couple of things happen. First, you force air into the whites, forming bubbles. Second, the beating motion stretches the protein molecules. This breaks their internal bonds and causes them to unfold. They bond with each other as we've discussed previously, but this time they join to form a lining around each air bubble. Think of all those protein molecules getting together to encircle and protect those little spheres. I like to imagine them singing Kumbaya. As beating continues, the bubbles are broken up into smaller and smaller bubbles, and more protein strands bond to coat them. Eventually, the bubbles get so tiny you can barely see them, and they form a solid white mass that holds its shape and looks like shaving cream. By this time, the whites have increased six to eight times in volume. Now let's model this transformation. You'll need 12 wiki sticks, a wooden skewer, and three ping pong balls. Repeat the denaturation and coagulation modeling activity, but this time bond the wiki sticks around ping pong balls to simulate the lining that forms around air bubbles in an egg white foam. It all sounds easy, and it really isn't complicated. However, there are a few ground rules you should follow in order to get a quality foam, which means it's soft, moist, and stable. I now present to you, Seven Secrets to Successful Foams. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll take it down a notch. Work with spotlessly clean bowls and utensils. Even a small trace of fat residue can interfere with foam formation. This is because fat lubricates the bonding points in the protein surrounding the bubbles. Imagine using buttered spaghetti noodles instead of wiki sticks on your ping pong balls. If a bit of yolk gets in with the white during separation, that white should be set aside for another use. Remember, egg yolks contain fat. See rule number one. Don't beat egg whites in plastic bowls. Because plastics and fats have similar chemical properties, fat tends to linger in a plastic bowl even after a thorough washing. See rule number one. Choose a bowl that's the right shape and size. It should be small enough to prevent the unbeaten whites from spreading into a shallow puddle, but large enough to hold the increased volume of the finished egg foam. Pay attention to temperature Room temperature egg whites whip up more quickly. However, cold eggs are easier to separate. This means it's best to separate eggs straight from the fridge, then let them sit at room temperature for 30 to 45 minutes. Use stabilizers as directed. Cream of tartar, vinegar, or sugar may be added to a foam to help it hold up. 
If your recipe calls for one of these, pay attention to when it should go into the mixture. Acids go in early because they help with initial denaturing. Sugar will slow down foam formation if it's added too early, so wait until the foam is solid white in color. At that point, the sugar glazes the bubbles and keeps them from drying out. Imagine covering your Wikisticks ping pong balls with a sheet of plastic wrap. Know when to stop. Once you reach the desired foam stage, stop beating. If your whites start to lose volume and look dry and clumpy, you've gone too far. Speaking of desired foam stage, I guess we'd better talk about that. At first, they'll just get frothy. That's the foamy stage. They're still really wet, and they don't hang on to the beater very well. Next comes soft peaks. Egg whites have reached the soft peak stage when they stay together in a foam, but the tip slumps over when the beater is removed and held upright. When egg whites reach the stiff peak stage, the foam holds its point straight when the beater is lifted upright. It happens to us all sometimes. You're thinking you can get just a little more volume, just a little more stiffness, and you ignore that little voice in your head that's telling you to stop. Before you know it, your beautiful peaks turn into clumps and your silky foam gets watery. You've overbeaten. Those protein molecules can only take so much. If you take it too far, they will dry out and lose their elasticity, which causes the matrix to break down. This points to the fact that egg white foams are rather delicate. They require special mixing techniques when combining with other ingredients. Depending on the recipe, you may add the foam to other ingredients gradually, or you may add other ingredients to the foam all at once. The specifics vary, but the process usually involves folding. You see, if you just stirred an egg white foam the way you stir other foods, you would rupture and deflate the bubbles that make up the foam. Folding is a gentler form of mixing that minimizes damage. Here's how it works. Using a rubber spatula or a large spoon, Cut down through the center of the ingredients to the bottom of the bowl. Scrape along the bottom toward the side of the bowl, then pull the spatula upward and twist your wrist to plop the mass back toward the center. Rotate the bowl with each stroke, gradually working your way around the bowl several times until the ingredients are incorporated. Now let's practice this technique with an activity. You'll need a large mixing bowl, an electric mixer, a rubber spatula, one tablespoon of dishwashing liquid, two cups of water, and liquid food coloring. Add the dishwashing liquid and water to the bowl. Beat with an electric mixer until a fine foam is formed. Drop a few drops of food coloring onto the surface of the foam. Using a proper technique, fold the food coloring into the foam until the color is evenly distributed throughout. Okay, 
That's everything you need to know to get those protein molecules whipped into shape. Spherical shapes, to be exact. In our next lesson, we'll try out these skills by making a sweet treat that's a delight to eat.